Chafing Armor Podcast, episode 153, Tower of Dust. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and lovable Dungeon Master, Michael Corley. And with me tonight is Lee. Lee, tell everyone who you'll be playing. Okay, everybody. My name is Lee, and I'll be playing Distant Bells, the Kenku Rogue, who has currently now added Midwife to his resume. (laughs) That is very, very true. And also with us tonight is Dare. Dare, tell us who you will be playing. Howdy, y'all. I am Dare, and I am playing Tix Birchmanson, the mighty, mighty... Gnome Paladin. Indeed. And also with us tonight is Izzy. Izzy, tell us who we'll be playing. Hello, everyone. I'm Izzy playing Marezi Mugra, a half-orc barbarian who finally had a nice nap. That's right, which she desperately needed after almost getting her head pulled off. Not gotten her head pulled off, but gotten a power upgrade is Riley. Riley, tell us who you will be playing. Hi, I'm Riley, and I'm playing a Thor Greyfield, a tiefling fighter. Wonderful. And also with us is James. James, tell us who you will be playing. Hello, my name is James, and I'm playing Pen and Chalice, a spell scale sorcerer who's got a mom again. That's right, got a mom. Mommy mom, issues. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> uh, I mean, who doesn't? When we last <laughs> left our players, after an epic battle with the god Bane, which uh, was successfully destroyed permanently by uh, both uh, clever use of a teleporting cloak uh, by Distant Bells, uh, many other clever things by the rest of the players, but ultimately a uh, powerful stab from Marezi Mugra that nearly cost her her own life, uh, finally destroying the god Bane. Y'all then uh, took a moment to breathe, and several things happened, including... Uh, Pinson being able to talk to his mother for the first time in many years. Uh, she has agreed to join and has freely admitted that she is, in fact, a dragon in mortal guise. Uh, in addition to all of that, you all reached level 10, and that is when dawn was breaking that, Penton, you heard a voice in your head, the voice of the necromantic chicken hat Audrey Three with its uh, incomprehensibly Southern Bell voice saying, <laughs> Land's sakes, take your hands off me! We we need to encounter a male chicken hut that sounds exactly <laughs> like Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> I say, I say, oh, you've got to have this cow here and put it inside me, I say, I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Baba Yaga's hut sounds like. Calling it now. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, but, Benton... What would you like to do? You are uh, you are at the uh, the inn currently. You whether you're in your hotel room or meditating outside, that's completely up to you. Or on the roof, for all I care. Uh, let <laughs> me know what, where you are and what you would like. Uh, to do. Prob- probably in a in a room uh, that seems sensible. But um, uh, he will startle awake immediately. Try and sense where she's at from the uh, direction from him. Currently. Uh, so you. You do actually have a vague directional sense of Audrey when she's relatively close. Right. Uh, and you can tell that she's vaguely in the direction of the docks. He's going to scramble up and uh, bang on some doors with his staff saying, Hey, Audrey's in trouble. Audrey's in trouble. Bam, 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 bam. And assuming he's knocking on the right doors, but he's not sure. Um, just uh, just knocks on all the doors on the floor. Um Okay, and uh, Aphil actually uh, assists and flies in uh, one of the windows, and uh, Marezi, you feel a sharp pecking at the side of your neck, uh, which is incredibly tender at the moment, and Aphil goes, bing, 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 and uh, a a very sleepy lizard looks up next to you, uh, Marezi, as as you you are awakened with, with a sharp beak. I see. I think now that she's had a long rest, she's able to uh, spring up fairly quickly, though not as, as much as you'd like. Yes. You are, you are healed, but you are still sore. Uh, you, you are able to spring up, and uh, the rest of you are, are certainly alerted by this banging uh, on the doors. Uh, okay. And, and, and you all you all are, are battle-hardened adventurers, so it's not hard for y'all to get up and get going. Okay. Um, I'm going to empathically... Uh, uh, 
gonna indicate to to Afield to stay with Marezzi. Okay. Um, just kind of like put a picture of 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 Marezzi in, in Afield's mind, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, uh, Dimension Door as far as I can in her direction. Okay. Uh, so the rest of y'all. Uh, you're you're just stepping outside into the hallway of this inn. There's a, there's a long, narrow hallway that you know then goes downstairs into the uh, eating uh, chamber down below. And just as you step outside, you see uh, uh, him take his staff and then just take a step and just. Whoop. And I don't know if y'all have ever actually seen him dimension door before. I, I don't know if you've ever <sighs> seen him do that, but he just is gone. Uh, distant bells. Uh, you you don't actually need to s- sleep. You do have to like kind of like stasis, like you know, rest your mind, uh, in accordance with the game. But uh, were you just hanging out in someone else's room, or did you? Or w- what were you doing with the evening? Uh, honestly, Bell's probably would have been inside Audrey. Like there, there's nowhere really else he could have been. Okay. Like he like he's not going to buy a room for a plush toy. <laughs> like what what's the point? Right. Like it would, so it would be really weird. It just would have made more sense to him to just be like he could have come and snuggled with Kicks. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been inside uh, Audrey. Fan art, get on it uh, now. Please do not uh, ship bells and ticks. <laughs> no, no, I'm calling it now. Shipping. It's just it's just adorable. It's just no, um, can't believe I just had to hear my dad say the word "oo." Yeah, be very proud of that fact. So, Ooh, puppy. Um, that's right. So, uh, I, I love this. I love this, by the way. Uh, and and I, th- this is the stuff that that makes being the dungeon master great. Uh, we have established that when Audrey is moving, like there is like a gentle rocking, but it's not equivalent to the actual movement outside because otherwise, y'all would constantly be vomiting from the motion sickness uh, that much in the way that, that Audrey is in effect a kind of uh, bag of holding. She has she has the properties of a bag of holding in some ways, which is why she's bigger on the inside. Um, in that same way, that's why you aren't immediately aware distant bells that anything is wrong. Uh, but, but even Audrey, if she gets turned on her side... Uh, you feel it inside as you suddenly begin to slide down and bunk into the, the wall on the side, just the bells. What would you like to do? Well, that's going to quote unquote wake me up, I guess, out of my, yep, yep. out of my torpor, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Bells will, is, did the side I land on uh, happen to have the window on it? Or? Uh, I will, I will, uh, I will say yes, because it's funner that way. Um, so two things. One, you are near the window. The other is a giant wyvern in a bottle <laughs> is sliding towards you. Well, we're going to get out of the uh, way of that if that happens to be in any particular uh, collision course. Yeah, it most certainly is. So I would like you to make a reflex saving throw. I know you're terrible at this. Oh, yeah, no, it's my worst you got, one. You got even, got even worse at level 10. Yeah, how terrible. Um... Honestly, it doesn't matter how low I roll, it's fine. Um, yeah, I rolled a six. I have a 14 to dexterity, to reflex save. So. <laughs> so a dirty 20? Dirty 20. Uh, yes. So you, you not only do you avoid the uh, wyvern in a bottle sliding towards you, but you actually use it. You jump on top of it, pivot off, and are easily able to make it to the window, which is closed right now. Uh, but it is uh, at, a, at a sort of 45 degree angle from where you are right now. But you're able to hop over to it. And we'll have a uh, peek through and see what if I can see what's happening because clearly something is going on. Uh, so from this angle, you are mostly looking at the ground, mm-hmm. but you can see a couple of things. Well, well, give me a quick spot check. Okie dokie. That's improved too. Um, 23. You with a, with a good roll like that. One thing you definitely can tell is, in some way, shape, or form, Audrey is being carried. Uh, you think you can see human feet, uh, you know, walking below. There, with the twenty three, there also seems to be something around Audrey. Uh, you're not quite sure what it is. Uh, 
some sort uh, of like net, some maybe. kind of a, a net, a binding, something like that. You can't make it out because your vision is obstructed from this angle, but that seems to be what is happening. Can I? Uh, she is. Can I uh, pop the window open and take a pot shot at an ankle with my short bow? Yeah, you absolutely can. Uh, now I would like you to make a sneaky sneak roll if you want to surprise them because they might hear you. I will. Yeah. Um, I know you're terrible oh, with those. I will use a piece of soap to grease up the hinges of the window to make it silent. Mm-hmm. And then open the window. And, uh, and, and I, I want to be very, very clear. This is just a reminder more than anything. Uh, you do also have those stars that are on your cloak. I do, but uh, that, I don't that do. want to use them no, just yet. No, 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 no. no they, you, I, I'm not trying to get you to use them. Just a, just a quick yeah, reminder. No, no, I, they, I, they do actually regenerate. I think they'll be good for something else. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, for my... Uh, I'm going to say move silently for that, because uh, I rolled a 15, and I have a 15 in that, so that's a 30. <laughs> yeah, so the with the soaping of the window, it, it is just like there's not even the slightest creak as it opens up. Uh, I will take a quick pot shot at the ankle that I can see. Okay. Uh, that didn't do that, did it? Yes, it did. That's a nat 20. Natural 20. Okay. Some times three for a short bow. Crap. Oh, right by my foot. Nice. Uh, that's a five, so that's 15 damage to the short bow to the ankle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you hear a cry of pain and a stumble, and everything kind of happens at once, and uh, people scramble to get out of the way, and there is a, uh, now the ground is leaping up towards you, uh, as, you know, you, because you were facing down, and now you are about to be, I'm you need to get out back of the into the, I'm popping back into the hut! <laughs> okay, uh, you hop, you hop back in as the dirt, like, poof! up as the as the entire hut hits the ground and uh, you can feel a little bit like Audrey struggling but something is restraining her or something is is preventing her from moving as she normally would um, so there you, there is this window we have established that there is a window in the hut and there's of course also the door uh, the door is and and the chimney sorry we've also established as a chimney yeah um, uh, I I Hmm. I, I kind of want to start a fire in the chimney for the smoke. Um, one, so it gives the rest of the party an idea of where where she is. Um, and two, so no one can come down the chimney. Even though it is like a little flu, that doesn't mean, you know, I can go up that chimney at this point. You know, if someone sends like a, a fairy or something down the chimney, then I'm, yeah. But mostly just, you know, smoke obscures things. Might make things a bit more difficult for them to maybe pick it up, pick her up, or just trying to do anything I can to delay them from taking her anywhere else um, until you know Penton and the rest of the party get here. Because you know we, we're not, we don't want to go anywhere. So yeah, okay. I will quickly start a fire inside uh, the the little chimney that we have. Uh, that uh, I would like you to make a quick roll, but it's it's not difficult to make a fire. Uh, more so, I, I, the only reason I'd even make you roll is because it's at a weird angle and, yep. you know, there's, I a, there's a lot happening. Sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, then it's no problem whatsoever. I'm doing this all while making, uh, trying to stay as far away from the big skull totem that is still in the middle of the, of everything. Um, just trying not to go anywhere near that because I've seen what it does. You're a stuffy. Well, it's true. It doesn't want. It doesn't want. You don't have. It, you don't have what it wants. But you don't know for certain that it can't, like you know, true. suck your soul out. Uh, so it, it may not be entirely voluntary at this point. It might just be. Oh well, you touch it, it's going to eat you. It doesn't really get much say in the matter. Right. Well, I, I think what they're saying is like you literally don't have blood right now. Uh, so it, it might not... Not really my thought but, process, really. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't think about not having blood, usually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, you know, I've seen what it does. It, 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 who knows? It could take life essence, which I still have. 
I'll swallow your soul. I'll swallow your soul. Exactly. You, you, the, I, I, I am, I am definitely agreeing that uh, that is a very sensible precaution. The, the smoke begins to uh, billow, and uh, we would definitely, uh, everyone else can begin to move forward, uh, but obviously, vroom, a certain dimension door as uh, Penton, you suddenly appear uh, about uh, 100 feet from Audrey. Audrey is on the ground. There is smoke beginning to curl from her chimney. Uh, she is wrapped up in a very unusual rope. It, it is clear to you that the rope itself is not primarily restraining. There, there's something else about the rope. Okay. That's that's restraining her because you happen to know Audrey can literally turn intangible. Um, so something else is going on. And there's and, a guy uh, nearby hopping around on one foot. <laughs> there is, there is. Uh, you actually see uh, three uh, burly men. Like you would, you would take them to be dock workers. Okay, uh, is is like the the look that they have, and one of them is hopping on his foot uh, with a with a very small. Uh, bolt, uh, a crossbow, arrow. Is it crossbow? Yeah. Uh, no. It's yeah, just a, yeah. It was a short bow. Short, short bow. Uh, uh, bolt sticking out of his uh, foot. Okay. Uh, ankle. The steel bit is and, in it, and the f- and the felty bit is bobbing around because it is still. That's right. Made bolt, out of felt. Bolt, bolt. <laughs> that's right. It, it is. I, I I canonically said that the metal bit stayed the same, uh, even though they shrunk. Uh, so. Uh, what would you like to do, Penta? Um, a quick, quick question: um, Are the rooms at the end uh, on the uh, upper floor? Yes. Okay. Well, not thinking uh, about height, um, he would have just gone in a direct line mm-hmm. as far as he could go. So he would appear like you know ten feet in the air, um, and then uh, instinctively thwap his wings out and glide toward the area kind of like slowly descending um, to give him a and, little, little extra movement. And do I understand that you are a little better at flying now? That is correct. I can now actually flap some <laughs> as it were. Um, so uh, in, in a technical term, he can fly for two rounds and then has to rest at least one round. So, but he can glide. So it's kind of just like up a little, down a little, up a little more, down a little, up a little more, you know, kind of like and he's like an escalator instead of an elevator right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so he's yeah you know, he can kind of a little bit flap his way over there. So he's going to kind of stay aloft and, and take a semi bird's eye view of the situation coming in. Okay. Um, so uh, so there's three dock worker burly dudes there. They're like clearly human. Um, are they as far as you can tell? They are all okay. human. Are these the spells are us girls missing guys? Uh, that is a that is a reasonable hypothesis, but you you certainly don't know for certain. Oh, interesting, interesting. Are we being double crossed? Um, all right, um, he's going to glide in and just kind of land on Audrey's side, okay, on top of her, as it were. Um, kneel down and give her a little pat and say it's going to be okay, sweetie. And um, uses prestidigitation to boom his voice out. Get away from my hut. (laughs) Um, Lovely. Uh, Give me an intimidation check. All right. As he stands there with wings out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, uh, That'd be a 27. 27. Uh, so, like, these three dock workers, you know, are just doing their job, but suddenly something strikes one in the foot, they, they stop for a moment, and then suddenly what appears to be some sort of demon lands on top of the hut, the wings unfurl, and there's an echoing boom. Uh, and they, they all scatter backwards. Uh, and... Uh, everyone else, uh, you can't get here this turn, but you're all heading that way. Is is anyone doing anything special while you're heading towards this commotion? Well, Tix is running, so mm-hmm. up to uh, his short little legs as fast as he can, but that's about it. Okay. 
uh, and Athora and Marezi. Running. Same. Okay. You're booking it. Y'all, y'all are both pretty fast. Uh, you're making your way. And y'all, y'all can see this happening in the distance. Uh, and you certainly hear Penton with his uh, augmented voice <laughs> uh, yell out. And that is when the hut... Uh, so you know like in old uh, Roadrunner cartoons when Coyote pulls out a, a big giant U-shaped magnet... <laughs> And, okay. And something starts sliding towards it. Well, that's what starts happening to Audrey. She begins just sliding towards the docks, like pulled by an unseen force. What the heck? Uh, and she is starting to slide, and she is protesting mightily. She is saying, oh, land sakes, let go of me. <laughs> uh, and uh, she is, is beginning to pick up some pretty good speed as she moves towards the docks. Okay, um, using my uh, detect magic vision as, as this rope or whatever. What, what is it that it's exactly binding her? Uh, so the, well, give me an arcana check, and the, the rope is definitely magic using your vision. That's okay. not even a question. But, um, but give me an arcana check. Oh, oh, that's, I rolled a four, so 18. 18, yeah. Uh, so you think you recognize this? It is not... It is not a magical item per se, uh, but it is um, literally made from if you deconstruct a magical item. Uh, it is known as residuum, uh, and if you if you break down a magical item, this is what you get, and uh, you recognize it pretty well because if you recall. That is what the hag had used to bind the two halves of the Staff of Seraphim. Hmm. Uh, however, she didn't know that one of the halves was fake. Right. So it didn't work. Uh, it was unsuccessful. But it, it, in fact, it, it, uh, you still somewhere probably have those fine gossamer threads of residuum uh, somewhere in the, in the hut. Uh, but these are much thicker uh, rope and you suspect that is what is interfering with Audrey's ability to use her special ability. Uh, residuum, it's just it's just material, right? It's not uh, it, it, is, ha- yeah, it doesn't no, it, like do things in and of itself necessarily. Not um, really. Uh, the, the biggest thing about residuum, one, it's, it's very valuable. Um, it's kind of like uh, clear mana back in, in the uh, Magic the Gathering days is, is that it it can be replaced uh, it can replace other spell components. Okay. Um, and is it like is it like tied, or is it just kind of like loosely wrapped around her? I mean, uh, is it like being magically held in place, I should say, or is it actually tied? It seems to just be physically tied. Okay. Um, is that not anywhere in sight? Um, yeah, yeah, you can see it. Uh, well, I'm going to have at it. All right. Uh, I'm going to assume I can't like break it necessarily, but um, I'll try it. The, I'll try it. The knot. All right. Uh, go ahead and uh, d- do you have a, a, a rope skill? Uh, well, I had two points and use rope. Uh, there you. That's 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 what I want. <laughs> that's just that's just to tie the rope that that he uses to hold his uh, his his rope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I <laughs> could secure a complicated rope. Complicated rope knots. <laughs> He's secretly a shibari master. That's not so bad. Uh, Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay, uh, you are you are starting to get it loose. Uh, it's it is starting to come loose, and you can feel Audrey like shaking and and twisting underneath. Um, and uh, she is she is starting to be able to get free. Uh, the the dock workers are scrambling out of the way as as Audrey is is hurtling faster and faster towards the uh, docks. And uh, this is uh, this is towards the docks as I, as I keep repeating myself. But it is actually a little to the side, and uh, as y'all are running and chasing after that, you know this this weird like bobsled uh, kind of thing happening. Um, Marezi, you actually recognize this area. Uh, do you remember approaching three gentlemen who were building a scaffold? Yes, and they yes. they were cagey, and I couldn't get any info out of them. That is absolutely correct. Uh, so you rec- as you as you run by one of the guys, uh, you recognize them. He's he's hopping up and down and pulling a weird uh, bolt out of his foot. 
uh, and you you actually recognize them. That these are the same guys. But as y'all keep heading, uh, you can actually see that scaffold, and uh, it looks a little different now in that it's finished. Uh, it has some very simple, like tapestry hanging from it with uh, with wizard uh, script hanging from it. Uh, there is a large gym set at the top that is slowly spinning faster and faster. And on top of it is the wizard. The uh, oh, the asshole Dharma, wizard? Dharma Zamar. Dharma. And uh, Angelad. He, Angelad. This, this, <laughs> his this arms, is his petty. Wide. This is petty revenge for pissing himself, isn't it? You can't say that it isn't. <laughs> uh, and... Um, the, the thing that I really want to emphasize for y'all is that the scaffolding is about three feet higher than, say, Audrey would be if she was standing up. And it is clear that she is being drawn into the scaffolding. Mm-hmm. As, uh, as he begins to cast, he, he, there's, a little, there's a little podium in front of him where he has his spell book out, and he is... Uh, casting an incantation and things are happening very quickly uh, to to get what happens next. Uh, why don't we roll for initiative? Oh. Wow. Okay. What a concept. This, this is one of the very few places where um, a bard would come in handy. Yeah. Not, you're not wrong. Well, uh, you so, know. Penton. Penton, what did you roll? Uh, 15. 15 for Pinton and uh, Athora. 20, not natural. 20 for Athora. And for Tix? Tix actually got a 19 plus 2, so 21. Whoa. 21 for Tix. That belt is, is paying off in spades. It is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> with your little furry belt. That's amazing. Uh, and for Marezzi? 7. Seven for Marezzi. Still, still got that stiff neck. And um, also for, um, I apologize, I do know your name. Distant Bells. Good Lord, my brain tonight. Uh, Distant Bells, what did you get? 21. 21. Uh, so I'm assuming you probably have a higher dex than... Uh, uh, I don't know. Six. I'm happy to roll for uh. it. <laughs> <laughs> do y'all want to do, do rollies? Rollies. No. I'll, I'll do a reflex uh, roll off with ticks, sure. Uh, no, a distant bells has higher has higher depth. There's not much I can do from inside here, so honestly, it's 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 kind of a moot point at this at this juncture. Anyway, um, is my mom coming along? Uh, she is. She's. Uh, you you don't see her right now, but she did seem to be coming in this direction. Okay, takes a bit uh, for a dragon to get ready after after a. I'm guessing she didn't really do a whole lot of sleeping, but maybe she did. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, she has to get all of the treasure off her, you know, she has to, like, shake it out of yeah, her. Yeah, from the uh, hoard that she sleeps on. Yeah, exactly. You know how. <laughs> uh, but you don't see her right now. But okay. she seemed to be coming in that direction when you left. Um, so, unfortunately... I mentioned that the dungeon master got some new dice. Oh no! Uh, and Dharma actually is going first. Wow! Uh, he got a twenty-four total. This uh, is dang. not a good omen. Yeah. Um. So Audrey is entering into the scaffolding. As she does, you see her feet begin to shudder, and. Disincorporate. No. And Penton, Penton, no. you hear a scream come from uh, Audrey. Audrey does not experience pain the same way. She is a construct, but a living construct. And uh, you hear a terrifying scream. Dharma uh, cannot do anything else at the moment, but he does seem to be aware of y'all's presence. Uh, that will actually bring it to distant bells. Uh, all right. Um, I, oh, um, well, I'm in here, so, um, you are, you are, what, you're literally inside, and you know, what, what's happening you, inside the hut? Uh, the hut is shuttering, 
Uh, there are sparks of magic, like like just shooting every which way. The skull is glowing, uh, like a like a deep deep purple. The glass is is shaking that contains the wyvern. And so it, it it looks terrible in here. Hmm. Oh boy. Um. I have no idea what's going on outside. I, sh- I think Bells would probably take this moment to, you know, leave, um, mm-hmm. open the door, I guess, and 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 see if there's some egress he can take uh, before you know things in here get weirder. Uh, given his, you know, he's he's not a fan of magic at the best of times, but. The hut hasn't done this before, so the, the further away from this he gets, the uh, safer he feels. So, yeah, he will push open the front door of the hut, if he can, uh, to leave. Okay, uh, you absolutely can do that. Are you trying to get anywhere in particular when you pop your head out and you see this is happening? Uh, well, I guess I'm going to go up. Um, I'll climb the, the scaffolding. Right. Well, you could just fly, right? You're a bird, right? I hate you. Uh, (laughs) You know damn well I can't fly. All right. Dungeon Master teases. Uh, But I I would like you to give me a... uh, Well, uh, you can either climb or I believe you have a special ring at the moment. I do. I have a ring of jumping. Can I jump that far, though? you, You absolutely can. With a ring of jumping, you can. Then I will do that. Yes, it will be faster. Okay. Uh, uh, as you as you make your way out the the <laughs> window, this is turned to the side, and you can just jump straight to the top That's of the scaffolding if you wish. Twenty six on the jump. Okay. Boing. That is your move. Uh, a mm, well, there's there's a wizard ankle in front of me. I'm hoping. Um. <laughs> so it's, it's your new spe- your new spe- your new uh, favorite enemy is ankles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the first one was a pot shot. This one is also a pot shot, but it's also right in front of me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to. Oh, oh, this is a sneak attack. Uh, is it not? I mean, he doesn't know I'm here. Yeah, this wizard is true. I, this world. I would I would like you to make a stealth roll. Oh no! Yeah. <sighs> Actually, to be fair, my stealth isn't. I mean, it's okay. You know what? It's not that bad. That's a sixteen, so thirty-one. <laughs> not that this bad. This definitely counts as a stealth attack, then, as a sneak attack. Um. Okay. He does not know you're there. You you are a little toy, and he can't see you. Well. Uh. Yeah. Um. Oh, I can't use that any. I can't use that because it hasn't come up yet. Um, that said, my sneak attack is now five d six. So, um, roll to hit. I'll give you one guess at what just came up again. Couldn't be a natural twenty, could it? It is. Wow. Uh, right. So, um. Man, my, you have the, the my, minus, but but you also have all the doubling. My karmic rebalance is coming soon. Oh boy. Um. Yeah. So that is okay. Um. First attack, which is the sneak attack, is six damage. So multiplied by two is twelve. Plus the 5d6, which is, oh boy, uh, 24. So 24 plus 36. So 36 damage for the first attack on the ankle. Uh, and the second attack. Now, a, I could be wrong, but I believe that the sneak attack damage is only on the first attack, right? It is, but this right. is the second okay. attack. Which is just a normal right. that I have. You still get a you still get a second attack, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's a non-natural twenty. Um, which 
doesn't matter because my critical threat range is 17 to 20. So, yeah, I rolled a 19. Wait, no, I didn't. I rolled a... Yes, I rolled a 19. 15 plus 7. So, yeah, it's still critical. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's no, it's not. No, no. No, it's not. My bad. Again, I forgot how to play. Yeah, so it, it's it's just a it's just a uh, twenty something to hit, yeah. which hits. I'm, I hope. <laughs> uh, it does. Uh, okay, so, and then my pitiful one damage. <laughs> <laughs> so thirty-seven points total. 37 points. Uh, now, he is a high-level wizard, but he is still a wizard. Uh, so... Uh, Did I cut his tendon? What, Did I cut what, his Achilles tendon? What is it? Uh, so he he does, like, stagger badly, and he scr- he has, a like, a high, reedy voice. And of course he, he does. He goes, ah! He goes, I have been, I have been attacked by dark forces! That hurt a lot. Uh, he is still casting his spell, though. Ooh, but that really? will bring it to that will bring it to ticks. Yeah. Does that constitute some concentration checks? Um, hmm. it, it kind of should. Uh, I well, it, due to the nature of the spell, this is clearly like a, a a ritual or incantation. I'm going to allow it. You do disrupt the spell. So he, he, like, there's a moment where the, the, the crystal is slowly rotating. It's like this, this, this deep, uh, it's like a, it's like an ugly green crystal and it, it like uh, stops and the, the energy vortex below that's disincorporating, uh, the legs, uh, stops. Uh, he curses and begins to cast the spell again and the, the crystal slowly starts to turn again, but you have interrupted it. Yes. Uh, because he rolled a five. Uh, that is your turn, Tix. All right. How far away am I? Uh, you are pretty far uh, because y'all were, y- you didn't have Dimension Door, and also this thing's been sliding away from you. Right. But I'm going to say you're about 100 feet. Okay. So um, I'm still two turns from close combat. So I will cast um, Dispel Magic which has a 120 foot range on uh, his structure. So I'll move move forward my 30 feet, plant myself and cast a spell magic. That is a 22. With the 22, uh, again, his thing shudders and stops and uh, you feel the you feel the 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 force of your hand uh, and your god like reaching out and pushing against his magic and he curses at you uh but it it works he he once again his his spell has been stopped uh that that worked I only cast one spell and so I'm gonna take a pot shot at him with my uh, crossbow and use one of my magic bolts say fire. And so I'm going to shoot a magic coral at him to see if I can ding him. And that is a 17. Okay, that will hit. All right. And so he takes... He takes six points plus... uh, Six points... uh, No... Three points of burning damage, so nine points total. And he's on fire. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, this was the question asked to Marezzi earlier. Uh, as you do that, and he now is on fire and will take damage on his turn uh, as he tries to put himself out. And will constantly need concentration checks because he's on fire. This is <sighs> true. This is true. And that will actually bring it to you, Athora as you are running towards all of it. All right. Um, I don't think I can do anything yet, but run towards them. Okay. Uh, you can certainly use your, your full action uh, to double your distance to help close the distance. I'll do that. Uh, or, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that 
Perfect. And uh, you just book it, and y'all just hear ching, 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 and uh, uh, Catra is running behind you. Meow, hold up. Uh, <laughs> and that will bring it to you, Penton. Okay. Um, uh, Penton has had a bad couple of days and uh, is now watching the Chicken Hut be disincorporated. Uh, his, his, he is absolutely furious and with that fury comes a flash of white light uh, wherein he takes his dragonborn form um, and he's going to leap up and how, how high up is this platform? Uh, it's just like a little taller than, than Audrey you said. Yeah. Yeah, so that so shouldn't be a huge in, leap for him. In your in, in your form. dragonborn form, you can yeah. certainly do it. Okay, and I'm going to land up there, and I'm going to attempt to a grab the gem, and then two beat him with the gem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love all of this, and I, I I want I want this for you. So uh, give me give me um, that attack roll. Okay, well, I guess what, what would be involved in grabbing a gem? Is, is it just, like, floating there? Is it loose? Can I just grab it? Is, it? it is, like, lightly floating, just like an inch above the little dais that it's in. Okay. Uh, while, and, it's, and, while it's active. And this is big enough to, like, actually, like, hurt somebody, right? You said it was... Oh, yeah, yeah, hurt. it's, it's okay. big. It's big. All right, I'm going... Yes, I'm going to bring it down upon him as hard as I possibly can. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, the anger flowed into my die, <laughs> and it turned up a twenty. Nice, natural twenty. Um, I don't know. I don't know what kind of damage a, a, a gem does. <laughs> His head has it's been not, replaced by the great. gem. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, it would be. Uh, it would be one d ten because it's just crushing. Plus uh, my prodigious strength bonus of zero. Yes. yes. Um, so. I'll but given the damage that he has taken, Benton, uh, <laughs> describe to me how you kill uh, this this wizard. Well, I I think the description the kind of uh, kind of speaks for it. Um, it it just I, I it, the the gem comes down, and I I would like to think that he turns to be in shock and fear uh, as seeing this blue dragonish creature just he, lap, jump into his face. He pisses and, himself again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love it. Let's hope. Uh, and then, yeah, the gem just comes down straight into his face and lodges itself there. Now, uh, that is fantastic. And there's just this this moment where you see him like weaving a counter spell and then just the, the weight of the gem comes down and there's just a crunch and he, he sputters and dies. And then he pulls the gem out and hits it with him again. <laughs> and then he picks it up and hits him with it again. Maybe four, five, six times. Uh, there is there is a, a fine, uh, chunky salsa. Uh, Bell's kind of... Uh, Bell's kind of reaches out. Used to be. Bell's kind of reaches out and kind of like starts hammering on this dragonborn's legs. It's like, I think he's dead while he's cu currently covered in brain matter that is raining down from above <laughs> Bells is uh, Bells is Bells is dripping this goo um you can stop now you can stop now uh Penton growls at him <laughs> Bells growls back he's I, I think Penton is experiencing something vaguely akin to a barbarian rage right now Bells growls back He's not scared. Yeah, and uh, 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 Marezi, you, you uh, actually, Marezi, would you like to do anything to uh, um, to help him as as you recognize the the effects of a um, rage berserker rage? <laughs> yeah. I realize there's no bonuses or anything, but it, the intention is there. <laughs> hmm. Breathe. Can buddy, she? Breathe. Can she roll? <laughs> Sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think she's gonna let him uh, uh, see this one through. Sort of a journey you have to take on your own. <laughs> I, I love it. I love nice. it. That is that is valid. 
I love it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Penton, what what are you going to do? Uh, after he uh, vents his uh, interest in smashing bad magic creep man, um, he's going to you know, stand there breathing hard and uh, then glance down at Audrey and see what kind of conditions she's in. Part of her lower feet are missing. So, like, where the toes would be are gone. Where her toes used to be is a sizable amount of residuum. Oh. And Damn, that's harsh. What, what you realize is exactly what the plan was, is if Audrey had been drawn into here, she would have been deconstructed into a massive amount of residuum. Uh, what is lying on the ground there would be worth, you know, many, many platinum. Uh, and that's just the toes. So when you say lower part of the feet, like, like, just like the toes themselves, not like the underside of her feet. Uh, I mean, the, uh, so she has a chick, she has chicken feet. So the, the back claw is still there. The, the meat, the main part of the foot is still there, but all of the front facing toes are gone. Oh, Yikes. she able to. We need to figure out if she's able to walk. We need to figure she's out if she's able to walk. That, that, just a blacksmith would give her some prosthetic toes, some steel ones. Oh yes, please, some gigantic, nasty, magical death yeah. claws. Yeah, just yeah. give her some Very nasty. Give her, <laughs> give her some actual weapons that she can use. Ah, we and can we get can them serrated. The residuum. We can use the residuum that he left behind. There you go. Can we? Can we dimension for more over to? Mossgate and have your no, we can't. friend to repair her? We we cannot. We um, we kind of save the life of a blacksmith here. It's true. Yeah, uh, but but he's missing a hand right now. Yeah, and also I don't know one. that he's like an artificer <laughs> per se. Um you you do know an artificer who made yeah. an arm. Yeah. Ma- not just an arm, but a magical arm that was powerful enough to wield the staff of Seraphin. Where so, whereabouts are they? Wait, who who made the uh, arm? The uh, didn't Prog- actually make the arm. Right? Prognati, Prognati made the oh, arm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So they are still north. they are still in the ice. Yeah, way Be- north. Bell still has his feather, right? Yeah. I can send the feather to Prognati. Tell him to make his way here. Uh, whether or not he has a way to get here quickly, you don't know. I mean, obviously <laughs> the elves probably have magic mm-hmm. users among them, but whether or not they can send him here quickly, you and the feather kind of travels. Like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if that's what the party wants to do, it's the quickest way to get a message to somebody who might be able to get here immediately. Maybe I don't know. Tix is in favor of it. Do it. <laughs> Bells does it. Says. Bell, Bells. <laughs> Bells. Immediate just sends sends the feather officer to to Prognani. Like uh, we need we need your assistance. Like. Now, this is an emergency. Okay. Uh, and and do remember, Prognati also upgraded Audrey, so she, yeah. he clearly has the ability to change Audrey. With with so, with with it, know. he'll he'll kind of send the message that you know this is about Audrey. Um, Meanwhile, um, I'm going to see if there's like we can like I don't know proper. I, I don't know if it would be better to leave her lying. Put her up on blocks. Proper, huh? <laughs> I'm oh, no. Oh, no. We, we need to sit her up and see and get a couple of cows and see if uh, her own the magic will yeah. repair her. So we need to get a couple unfortunately, of cows into her. Unfortunately, I think the best thing to do is to like actually hoist her up on this framework that he left behind. Put her up on blocks. Working in the way it should. Just to like so she can like stay off her feet. But not be like lying in the street. If that makes any sense, you can absolutely do that. Uh, one of the things that we have established is that Audrey isn't that heavy. Is obviously these three men, uh, burly men, but three men were able to carry her, and that's been established before that that's been possible. So, right, y'all can easily lift her up. Whereas yeah, the Thor so should just be able to do it by themselves, honestly. True. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so let's 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 hoist her and I will give her soothing words as we're doing this and tell her like that we're doing everything we can to help her and uh 
Um, I'll, I'll gradually work my way out of my dragonborn form as this, while this is going on, while I cool down. Okay. So, as you as you do that, the feather <laughs> goes off uh, distant bells, and you feel its its power uh, leave you as it heads north at, a, at the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. Several things happen at once. Uh, there is a contingent coming towards y'all, uh, led by the uh, constable, uh, with with uh, the alderman walking behind him. They have an official-looking document with them. Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to get to that in just a second. <laughs> As that happens, a warning bell goes up uh, that is announcing that the city is in danger. As in, like, in danger of being invaded or attacked or something like that is happening at the city gates. As that happens, <laughs> um, as you look out into the sea, y'all hear, crang, 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 crang. And as the morning mist pulls aside, you are greeted by a sight that you did not think you'd see anytime soon. The good ship piss whistle. <laughs> and that's where we'll end! Shaping <laughs> no. Armor, episode 153. What an episode, guys! What an episode. Ow. <laughs> yes. You now to oh, wait another that... month until my stuff gets revealed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Um, but, uh, uh, sorry about that, but that is the, the, just the way it worked. Uh, and it's so, that's what's so crazy about D&D. If, if Dharma had just rolled poorly, that wouldn't have happened. True. That wouldn't that wouldn't happen, but that's that's how D and D works. Throw away your new uh, dice. It's crazy. Uh, well, if you if it makes you feel better, it did roll bad most of the rest of the time, so we'll see. <laughs> well, thank um, goodness for that. <laughs> uh, oh, and guys, uh, we have some beautiful fan art, uh, and by fan art, I mean uh, by our players uh, that I definitely want to share with y'all. <laughs> so, I hope that uh, Birch Bell I is a thing. You, I hope that it you is go not to <laughs> go to chafingarmor.com and you can see the show notes where I will upload these wonderful pictures of a sleeping uh, a sleeping Tix Birchmanson and a very unhappy uh, Kinku Rogue uh, in, in doll form. Uh, I, I, I love every oh, moment of this. Good God. <laughs> I I also drew um uh, Tix getting his hands guided by Penton. So I guess Tix is just very popular with the menfolk right now. <laughs> it's the charisma. It is. It is. He's very handsome. And he's small and compact. You know. That's what everyone wants in a man. He's cuddly size. He's going to have to explain himself to, to, Doug, to Duncan. <laughs> well, she gets him. Everybody else just gets to look. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you didn't. I... <sighs> oh, does yeah. Bell really want picks? No. 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 I no, still no, have no, a no, bottle no, no, of no. wine left. I will. Oh, no. No. I will drink one of my own potions first. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I can awesome. hear the. What is the what is the music that plays during the, the Righteous the, Brothers? The Righteous that's right, Brothers. that's right. The oh. Unchained Melody. Oh. Um, unchained Melody, thank yeah. you. I hung for you your touch, touch alone. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. This has become too silly, so I will I will end the episode, but thank you all for playing. Thank you thank everyone you for listening. Please, Please kill me. Thanks for not killing us. Uh, We'll we'll see. Check out Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash chafing armor for lots of craziness that's going on there. Along with our socials, you can search for us, chafing armor most places. And uh, I've got show notes links that have all of the wonderful uh, links to all of our players. So uh, y'all take care. Good night, everyone. Have a good Good evening, everybody. And until next time, we will roll with you soon.